Good afternoon and welcome to VMT News Afternoon Edition. I am Amanda Reese. And I am Ernie Seguirre. For two, for two weekends this month, our city had the pleasure of enjoying Laredo Theater Guild International's production of Yerma. Here's VMT reporter Indira Carnidas with the story. The Laredo Theater Guide International represents Yerma by Federico Garcia Lorca, directed by Marco Gonzalez. Performance dates include January 11 to the 14, 1821, and 2018 in the Tammy U Fine and Performing Arts Center's theater. Yerma tells the story of a childless woman living in a rural Spain. Her desperate desire for motherhood becomes an obsession that eventually drives her to commit a horrific crime. Because of the time she's living in, she expected to bear children. When she cannot, she is forced into measures that those in her society would view as extreme. All performances of Yerma will be presented in Spanish. Early bird ticket discounts will be available through December 1st Regular ticket prices are 15 for adults and 10 for children, students, and senior citizens. We catch up with one of the actors, Ms. Mendes, who's a teacher in Cigarro High School, who is playing La Bandera Street. Okay, so our scene is actually a little different because it has like a different rhythm in terms of like the, the seriousness of the play. So La Bandera number three, along with the other La Banderas, we are washing our clothes our husband, our children's clothes, and we are gossiping about yet. Mm -hmm. So we kind of bring, in a way, a little humor, but it's also like a lightness of it. So we are gossiping about her, about how she sneaks out at night, how she's not, you know, portraying a decent role as a woman in society because she's sneaking out at night, uh, lusting over Victor, and she's a married woman who can't have kids, so we're just kind of, and, I, and that's a little mean, but. Pod's becoming a fad among, among youngsters. We have reporter Brianna San Miguel with more information. The Tide Pod Challenge has been going through the nation. Teens have been daring each other to consume the Tide Pods in whatever way they can, whether it's cooking them in frying pans or biting into the packets. They then post it on social media everywhere. However, this could be deadly as the Tide Pods have ethanol, hydrogen peroxide, and polymers and shouldn't be consumed. Those who have done this challenge have mostly been hospitalized. The maker of Tide Products stated that their products shouldn't be played with and that safety is a serious thing. But why would kids do this? People say it's a way for kids to gain popularity. They feel like it's funny and that they can fit in. The challenge, however, isn't a new one with videos that have been released as far back as 2012. This sadly wouldn't be the first time that kids do hazardous challenges with challenges such as the salt and ice and the cinnamon challenge, and it certainly won't be the last. This past week, at least 20 people have lost their lives and some others missing due to the devastation that the California mudslides produce. Those killed range in, range in age from 3 to 89 and all lived in Montecito and Santa Barbara County, northwest of Los Angeles. Rescuers have been searching frantically for the missing, for the missing since rivers of mud and boulders plowed through neighborhoods in and near Montecito. An affluent, an affluent seaside community east of Santa Barbara demolishing homes and leaving roads impa impassable. The mudslides came in the early morning hours of Tuesday, destroying an estimated 65 homes and damaging hundreds of others. The Hawaiian employee who sent the wrong message alerting Hawaiians that a ballistic missile threat was inbound to the state has been reassigned the associated passports. The employee was reassigned to a job without access to the warning system and an internal investigation. Richard Raposa, a spokesperson for the Hawaiian Office of Emergency Management, told the Associated Press the emergency alert notification sent out on Saturday was a false alarm caused by an employee pressing the wrong button during a shift change. The tourniquet killer was convicted of killing a young woman and confessed to killing at least three more deaths. Is said to have a lethal in injection in Texas on Thursday. It'll be the first U.S. Ex execution in 2018. The sex offender got his name by murdering his victims using a stick to tightly twist a cord around their neck. 
These, murder, these murders went unsolved for more than a decade, and a tiny par partial of DNA was found under one of the victim's fingers, nails later leading to the two shores conviction. The U.S. Supreme Court has refused an appeal from a Texas death row inmate convicted of killing a Houston police officer 27 years ago. The high court declined declined Tuesday to review arguments from lawyers for prisoner Carl Wayne Bun Bunchen. The 73-year-old Bunchen is the state's oldest death row inmate. He'd been on parole only six weeks in June 1990. In June 1990, when evidence showed he shot and killed 37-year-old Houston officer James Irby, during a traffic stop, Bunchen, who had a long criminal record, was a passenger in the car Irby pulled over. On January 14, 48-year-old Juan Juarez was charged for endangerment of 16-year-old boy, of a 16-year-old boy. The diaper-wearing toddler was said to be unsupervised outside in the apartment complex. Child Protective Services and police were quickly notified and and after some searching, successfully located the father of the child. Juarez told police he was unaware the child had gone out and was swiftly arrested. Attention all food lovers. Laredo's monthly farmer's market will be held this Saturday at Veterans Memorial Jarvis Plaza from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Farmers from a 200-mile radius of Laredo come to sell their in-season produce, which range from fresh eggs to raw honey. There will also be a vendors of pastries as well as entertainment such as live music and dances. It's fun for the whole family with free parking thanks to El Metro Tr Transit Center. If you are interested in being a vendor and selling your fresh goods, you can submit a vendor application at 1000 Zaragoza or through email at farmersmarket at laredomainstreet.org. We'll be right back with sports and weather after this short break. Hello, and welcome back. My name is Daniel Flotis, and here are the highlights of sports for this week. The 2018 Winter, Winter Olympics brought on a ban on Russian athletes due to the country's systematic manipulation of anti-doping rules. This caused them to, as stated, get banned, but the Inter International Olympic Committee instead applied a strict scrutiny and will be instead in the Olympics as Olympians from Russia. Before the ban was semi-lifted, many Russians felt that the, the, the ban was politically motivated. The ban has ultimately made Russia drop from first to fourth on the medal table. Through the first quarter, Vikings led with a score of 10 into the second quarter with the Vikings score now leading with a score of 17. The Saints finally fighting back, scoring in the third quarter with a score of 7. Now through the fourth quarter, they wrap up the game with a score of 24 to 29. There's an investigation linked to the referee of the FIFA accused for fixing matches, matches qualifier in 2016 to numerous public document scandals of the previous six years. Joseph Lampi of Ghana was still being suspended for a poor performance before even being banned for life as a referee. The match fixing tax is a ref to award penalty kings after non-existent fouls or handball incidents to help betting syndicates cash in bets on the number of goals scored. This repeated occurrence created a pattern, a pattern, fuck, and bets the number of goals scored. This repeated occurrence created a pattern with each referee was uh, Lampi. And finally, in today's sports news, 
The Cavaliers lost against the Warriors on January 15, 2018. The Warriors with 118 points and the Cavaliers with 108. After the game, the Rockets did not get to beat the Clippers. They lost from 102 to 113. And that is all sports for today. Stay tuned here in VMT News. The 5th Annual Laredo Media and Film Festival is here again. Students from all over the city are invited to a two-day festival where local, regional, and state speakers will talk about the latest trends and skills in the industry. Learn how to be successful in this medium and network with others who have the same passion. The Laredo Media and Film Festival will take place on February 22nd and 23rd at the Laredo Civic Center from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. For more information, call 956-273-7800. Find more information in our social media. Good afternoon, my name is Jesse Gonzalez, bringing you the weather. Our national forecast shows partly cloudy skies with Des Moines, Iowa at 38 degrees, Little Rock, Arkansas at 43 degrees with sunny skies, and Nashville, Tennessee at 39 degrees sunny. The state of Texas is currently getting cold weather with El Paso at 55 degrees with sunny skies, Dallas at 47 degrees with sunny skies, and Corpus Christi at 44 degrees with cloudy skies. Our three-day forecast in Laredo shows 42 degrees today with cloudy skies, 55 degrees and partly cloudy skies on Friday, followed by 72 degrees on Saturday with sunny skies. That's our forecast for today, and as always, thank you for tuning into the weather. Autism spectrum disorder refers to a range of conditions present from early childhood that affect 168 individuals. Characterized by a difficulty in social interaction, verbal and nonverbal communication, and repetitive behaviors. Autism also affects the way a person perceives the world around them. Families for Autism Support and Awareness is an organization that goes all out to create a non-biased community in which individuals with autism spectrum disorders can be accepted. Visit their website to learn and participate in upcoming events. This upcoming Saturday, January 20th, the 23rd, the 23rd Annual Menudo Cook-Off Contest will take place on Highway 59 Life Grounds from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. with adult admission of $5 in the pre-sale with then $7 at the gate. Free for children 12 years and under, and under. You'll be able to try various menudos from many people all over. The winning cooks get trophies and prize money. For more information, Contact the Laredo Crime Stoppers at their website, laredocrimestoppers.org. The Laredo Energy Arena, together with Guerra Communication, will commence the annual Appetite Satisfying event, Taste of Laredo, on Thursday, February 8, 2018, at 7 p.m. In this event, the nation's and Laredo's best eateries showcase their food with an array of delicious samples, food trucks, and much more. People can expect mouth-watering food, live music, contests, and more. The price of admission will be $25 for adults, and children 12 and under are free. Hope to see you all there. That's all we have for today. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of VMT News. I'm Amanda Reese. And I'm Aaron Seguire. We'll see you next time. Have a